this morning on Capitol Hill, where Congress is in a state of uncertainty. Kevin McCarthy is now the first speaker of the House of Representatives ever to be removed from leadership. Eight members of his own party drove his takedown. Now lawmakers must scramble to find his replacement. Nicole Killian is following the situation for us on the Hill. Nicole, good morning. Hey, good morning to you, Vlad and Anne-Marie. Look, this creates a huge leadership vacuum at a critical time. The speaker is second in line to the presidency, and Congress still has a lot of work to do, including trying to avoid a shutdown in the next few weeks. The Office of Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives is hereby declared vacant. This morning, a house divided leaderless after Kevin McCarthy was forced out as speaker. I don't regret standing up for choosing governing over grievance. It is my responsibility. It is my job. McCarthy was pushed out by eight members of his far right flank led by Congressman Matt Gates. Chaos is Speaker McCarthy. The Florida Republican introduced the motion to remove McCarthy and accused him of breaking promises to conservatives and cutting deals with Democrats on spending. The reason Kevin McCarthy went down today is because nobody trusts Kevin McCarthy. This is a serious, solemn, and sober moment. House Democrats joined GOP hardliners in part after circulating this clip in a meeting from CBS's Face the Nation, when McCarthy blamed them for holding up a recent bill to prevent a government shutdown. I wasn't sure it was going to pass. You want to know why? Because the Democrats tried to do everything they can not to let it pass. They did Democrats dilatory. were the ones who voted did you, for this did you in a did larger you watch number it? than Republicans to, to keep the continuing resolution alive. Democrats save the day. And he goes on TV hours later and says Republicans did it. Republicans were leading, which is insane. McCarthy's ouster marks a stunning sequence of events for the California Republican who battled his members at every turn and went through 15 rounds to secure the speaker's gavel in January when he made this prediction. How confident are you that you will have this job for a full two year term? Thousand percent. With no consensus for a replacement, North Carolina Republican Patrick McHenry was designated acting speaker. McCarthy's deputies, like Majority Leader Steve Scalise, are being floated for the job, and some posted last night they'd nominate former President Trump for Speaker of the House. If I lose my job over doing what I truly believe what's right, I'm very at peace with it. Majority Leader Scalise is battling blood cancer. He says he feels great and he has been reaching out to members. A candidate forum is set for next week. As for the Trump option, a speaker does not have to be a current sitting member of the House, but whoever it is, they will continue to face this slim five vote majority, which means every vote's going to count. Uh, so I know it's quite early right now, Nicole, but just how much support does Majority Leader uh, Scalise have for the speaker position? And are there any other serious contenders? Well, I think he's pretty well liked within the conference and on the other side of the aisle. So, uh, you know, he certainly has a chance. And of course, when we were dealing with the original speaker battle back in January, I mean, his name was also uh, floated at the time as a possible candidate. But uh, there are other members who have been asked about whether they would be interested, whether that's House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan. Uh, you also have the Republican whip, uh, Tom Emmer, who works a lot with members uh, in terms of uh, vote count. Of course, you have the Speaker Pro Tem, who's kind of acting Speaker, uh, Congressman McHenry. So there are a lot of different options here. Another option, potentially, a uh, Congressman uh, Hearn. Uh, so there are a lot of names being floated right now, but as of yet, still no consensus on who the next Speaker should be. Are, is there a concern, though, that with this battle for speakership, if that's what it comes down to, that whoever those individuals are, they will find themselves in a very similar position to Kevin McCarthy, having to make deals with people in order to secure the votes? And, you know, we'll see a rerun of this. Well, exactly. I mean, it's a very precarious position for anyone who assumes this role. And considering that the former speaker got kicked out for working across the aisle with Democrats, you know, really makes it even tougher for whoever gets the next job because, you know, at the end of the day, legislatively, there are going to be times potentially where 
you know, the, the speaker is going to have to work across the aisle and everything cannot be a lift simply on the Republican side. I mean, that's just the political reality of the situation, whether some of these hardline members like it or not. So how someone is able to kind of toe that line between keeping their party in check but yet still working with Democrats, if that's now even an option, is a very uh, tough sell. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It's going to be an interesting ride, Nicole. Thank you. You bet.